Good morning all of you. Today I am going to share with you the second lecture on centrifugal pump. In the previous lecture I have explained it to you that what is the basic operating principle of a pumping system. I have explained to you about a pumping system and how we have applied Bernoulli's equation at different points. Okay and we have also discussed about this formula. We have deduced this formula H is equals to HS plus summation of losses. This formula is important once more I am telling you that H is the manometric head. It is the net head against which this pump is going to work and HS is the static head. That means the difference between the elevation of the uh, height of the lower reservoir and the upper reservoir and losses. Losses includes all the losses. Pipe loss, friction loss in the pipe and the loss in the pump, all the losses. And today we are going to discuss about the working principle of centrifugal pump especially. Okay. Can you see this figure? Yes. This is a picture of centrifugal pump and this picture you might have seen in Francis turbine also. The uh, centrifugal pump works exactly opposite that of Francis turbine. See this is the impeller. These are impeller blades. This is the volute casing and this is the shaft. What we are going to do is that we are rotating this shaft with the help of an electric motor maybe. Now when the shaft starts rotating the impeller which is mounted on it, it also gets, it also starts rotating. So impeller blade starts to rotate. I have assumed that they are rotating in the clockwise direction in this example. Okay. No problem in understanding this. Now try to understand. Now when this impellers will start to rotate, they will create a low pressure over here. Low pressure over here. Now what is going to happen that if this is my lower reservoir, if this is my lower reservoir and this is this dotted is the suction, it is the suction tube or suction pipe whatever you call it. So when the region of low pressure is created over here, here I am showing it with you with pen. So here low pressure, here high pressure. So water will move up. Now when water will strike this rotating impellers, what will happen? The impellers will give their rotational energy to water also. The water will also get a huge amount of rotational energy. Isn't it? And the water will experience a centrifugal force outwards. That means water has entered the blades from the inner direction and they will experience a central centrifugal force outwards like this. The water will enter from here and they will experience a centrifugal force outwards. Have you got it? I can show you here also with a blue pen that water from here will leave and leave like this because of the centrifugal force it will leave along this direction from here it, water will leave like this so water will move up like this now i am telling you one very important thing so till now what i have seen is that shaft power is being converted to the rotational energy of the impeller with the help of the shaft the impeller started to rotate and now when impeller started to rotate it has transformed its inner rotational energy to water. Now what is going to happen? It is very important. When water leaves from here, it has got high amount of velocity or kinetic energy. Its velocity is high. So its kinetic energy will be very high. So I can write is that rotational energy of water. Then it is converted to kinetic energy. Or I can write its velocity increases. So if velocity increases half mv square is the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy will also increase. We have learned this. Now see. Now I am just asking you one simple question. That if velocity increases will you be able to transmit water from lower zone to higher zone? 
will you be able to do so i don't think so take a very small example simple example suppose this is a pipe which you use to water the plants in the garden suppose if you if you press its mouth then what happens is that area goes down so velocity goes up when you press the mouth of the pipe area will decrease and velocity is will increase and the water will flow something like this why the water only moves up to this height why it does not move to a very higher height so can you just uh, by pressing the mouth of the pipe uh, by increasing the velocity will you be able to transmit water from um, from ground floor to the first floor or second floor no that means what velocity is not important in this case in this case what is important is pressure head velocity head is not important even if your velocity head is very high you won't be able to transmit water from a region of lower pressure to higher pressure or from a lower elevation to a higher elevation elevation to do so you need to have a higher pressure head so what happens actually try to understand here in this zone area of cross section is less as you move here the area of cross section goes on increasing isn't it area of cross section goes on increasing now what will happen if what when water is leaving from here uh, i'm writing over here area goes on increasing as i'm moving down and then going up area is going on increasing so velocity will decrease isn't it this is clear then from Bernoulli's equation we know that p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z is equals to constant we know this so if velocity goes down the pressure needs to go up otherwise Bernoulli's equation will fail if velocity goes down pressure needs to go up so what happens is that when I'm water is moving like in this way its velocity is decreasing and it is converted into the pressure head and so the pump is being able to transmit water from the lower elevation to higher elevation so I can write now that kinetic energy is converted into the pressure head it is ultimately converted into the pressure head okay have you understood this this was very simple to understand now we will learn the uh, velocity diagram okay before uh, going to the velocity diagram let me tell you one more thing which is important to note uh, let me show you over here okay focus on this part focus on here on this picture can you see some difference yes difference is here with diffuser in this diagram I don't have any diffuser this diagram I don't have any diffuser I have only impeller blades but here uh, let me zoom it out a bit uh, yes but here you can see that I have got these impeller blades as well as diffuser blades outside isn't it now what's the use of those diffuser vents or diffuser blades whatever these are similar to as that of guide vents but what is its function here in centrifugal pump I will explain it to you okay uh, let me explain it to you in this page suppose this is my shaft previously my figure was something like this uh, 
these were my rotors uh, these were my impeller blades in this way the impeller blades are arranged now see so my area of cross section was something about this way but when I am adding gas diffuser vanes like this like this and like this what I am doing is that I am increasing the area of cross section of this entire pump isn't it I am adding extra blades so of course the area increases now what happens area increases that means velocity goes down and I have told you the pressure will go up so what happens is that diffuser veins also helps to build up a pressure head okay it also helps to build up a pressure head just like the volute casing okay by adding diffuser veins you have just uh, increased the area and if area increases then the velocity will reduce of course when what and also from your common sense just look like this let me show you with blue pen when water leaves something like this and it goes something like this of course its velocity will reduce because it is striking over in these veins and its velocity will of course reduce isn't it water is have to move this part extra so its velocity will of course reduce from common sense so pressure will go up this is the function of the guide vents okay now I am going to explain it to you the velocity diagram okay velocity diagram okay now I am going to explain you the velocity triangle okay see I have assumed that my runner blade is like this it is like this I have in while drawing the velocity triangle I have assumed that my um, runner blade is in this but when I have drawn it in this picture my runner blade was in this direction it was opposite direction there is no specific reason why I have uh, made this uh, runner blade opposite direction no specific reason and see since at that time my um, uh, impeller was rotating in clockwise direction so now it will rotate in the anti-clockwise direction isn't it because I have changed the direction of the runner blade okay so, uh, you can take any direction okay now see if you have remembered the velocity triangle of Francis turbine then you will easily understand it see water will enter something like this this is v1 because in francis turbine water has left axially or radially without any wall component and centrifugal pump is just opposite also uh, see when water is actually entering the pump when water is actually entering the pump from the from this suction pipe it is actually entering like this it is actually axially so I have assumed that my direction of water is like this without any whirl component okay it is v1 is equals to vf1 that is velocity at inlet is equals to the flow velocity no whirl component okay now see since omega is in this direction so the velo tangential velocity of the blade will be in this direction u1 and we know that omega uh, u is equals to omega into r u omega into r and for inlet u1 will be equals to omega into r1 and for outlet u2 will be omega equals to r2 i will explain it to you more clearly just look what i am doing first so and the resultant of u1 and vf1 is nothing but it is vr1 vr1 resultant at the inlet now see uh, how we draw at the outlet try to understand it is very simple keep things very simple i'm telling you 
when water will exit uh, we know from all the velocity triangles you know we have learned till yet that the resultant direction is not does not change so the resultant will be in this direction this is v r2 resultant will be in this direction and water will leave in this direction this will be v2 because the blade is rotating in this direction so water needs to leave from this direction because the water will move up something like this and it will leave like this because of the centrifugal force okay because here also we have seen that the when the blade was curved in this direction and the blade was rotating in this direction water has moved up something like this and it has left in this direction that is what we have done over here now see v2 has got two components one is the perpendicular component that is vf2 and another will, will be its horizontal component that is vw2 so instead of drawing i will draw over here same thing vw2 so resultant of vf2 and vw2 is v2 and we know that vw2 is nothing but the wall or wall component or the tangential component at the outlet and vf2 is the flow component okay now see and what will be this thing between vr2 and v2 it will be nothing but u2 u2 that means tangential velocity of water at the outlet at the outlet okay this u2 which i was talking about okay now one thing you need to understand see the value of u1 is greater than that of u2 and this is sorry i have written just opposite thing u2 is greater than u1 u2 was this much and u1 is only this much and this is quite obvious because try to understand it is very simple thing okay try to understand it simply if i take this blade if i take this blade and this is my inlet and this is my outlet uh, can i draw here here i'm drawing this is my inlet i'm naming as one and outlet i'm naming as two okay and th this was my shaft something like this so this is my center point okay now see this this is rotating in this direction according to this drawing so uh, so the tangential velocity at this point is omega into this distance r r1 and tangential velocity at this point will be omega into this distance r2 since r2 is greater so the tangential velocity at the exit will also be greater okay so water when will when it will leave from here it will have a greater tangential velocity and we have seen over here also that its velocity increases okay so it's absolutely justified okay now see now we are going to see look at some formula important formulas uh, which are extremely simple also uh look at here work done by the impeller per unit weight per unit weight work done by the impeller per unit weight okay first just let me see power is equals to rho q uh v w2 u2 because um, v w1 u1 will be zero in this case so i will be left with only this thing okay this is what this is the power delivered by the impeller to the water okay now try to understand this is the power let me write it because this term is very important that this is power delivered by impeller to water 
that is rho q v w to u two. Now what you need to do is that you need to find work done by the impeller per unit weight. So what is work done? Work done is nothing but power uh, divided by the power into time, isn't it? Power into time. Work done is power into time. And in this case, it will be P into T. I am considering time as T and divided by mg per unit weight because I have to find per unit weight. Now, what is my power? Formula for power is rho q v w2 u2 into t divided by m into g. Okay, can you get this? Now, see what I will write is very simple thing. Rho, what is Q? It is nothing but volume by time. Q is nothing but volume by time into VW2 U2 into T. And what is M? M I can write as Rho into volume. G will be G. I have written M as Rho into volume. So, Rho Rho cancels out. Okay, very good. T T cancels out, volume volume cancels out, so I get V W2 U2 by G. Can you get it? V W2 U2 by G. So now you don't have to mark up this formula. You know this its derivation. So what we have got is that work done by impeller per unit weight is nothing but v w2 u2 by g it is v w2 u2 by g we have seen it okay now what is your height uh, now what is your manometric efficiency is nothing but it is the ratio of head that is the manometric head some books write it as h m h suffix m and some books write simply as h manometric head I have shown it to you, this head, which formula I have written at the beginning of my lecture, H equals to HS plus summation of S, this H is the manometric head. So H divided by, it is the ratio of the manometric head and the work done by the impeller per unit weight, W2 U2 by G. So it will become G into H divided by V W2 U2. So this is the formula for me manometric efficiency no need to mug up these formulas you know the derivation of these formulas after watching this video now what is your overall efficiency overall efficiency now see how to understand the term overall efficiency overall means the input at the very beginning and the in output at the extreme last Okay, so overall efficiency, what output you get and got at the extreme last? You got the, uh, you got it as rho q g into h, rho q g h, that is the um, power that the water has got to rise up, this uh, rise up, this uh, against this head h rho q g h divided by this was your extreme output and what was your input at the very beginning it was p that is the shaft power p is nothing but the shaft power and i can show you that from where rho q you have got rho q g h rho q g h is what power so power in raising up the water against a height h what power you have required see it is nothing but work by time what is the work it is mgh that is the potential energy uh, the water has got when it has risen up against a head of h divided by time m i can write as uh, rho into vol gh volume gh divided by t volume by time is nothing but rho q gh okay so you have got the proof of this also very simple this is what 
overall efficiency. Now one thing which might come your mind is that rho q g h. It is the power which water got on got to rise up against a height h. Isn't it? And we have write written here that is rho q v w2 u2. This is the power delivered by impeller to water. Try to understand. Please try to understand my words that um, the impeller is giving water some power to rise up against the height h and that power is rho q v w to u2 but the water cannot rise up to that height it can use only this much of power rho q g h in ideal case rho q g h and rho q v w to u2 will be same but here it is not same because of some losses and that's why make a value of mechanical uh, this overall efficiency is not equals to 1. Okay. Have you got it? Power delivered by the impeller to water. Impeller is giving this much of power. It is, for, it is telling water that I am giving you this power. And you go up to the height. Uh, you go up against the head H. But water is saying that I am sorry. There are some losses. And I have to utilize only this much power, rho q g h. So this was the output power which water has got. Okay. No confusion regarding this I think. And last term which we required to know is that mechanical efficiency. Mechanical. This is one thing also which you don't have to mug up the formula. You can understand it. Mechanical means... You know that the term mechanical is related to which components here see it is also first me, let me write it, it is output by input but which output and which input something which is related to mechanical that is output shaft that is the output which was given by the shaft that output which is given by the impeller that is rho q v w 2 u 2 and what was my input it was p that is the shaft power rho q v w 2 u 2 this was the output given by the impeller isn't it this was the output given by the impeller and the shaft power is never equals to this so please please understand this first shaft power P. A shaft is saying the impeller that I am giving you a power P. Now you start rotating but P is, is so sorry because of the mechanical losses. Here there will be some mechanical losses. Here will be mechanical loss. Here will be some mechanical loss and the impeller will have only. It. So the impeller will uh, have only rho q v w 2 u 2 power ok have you got it now impeller is saying to water that I am giving you this much of power you rotate but water is so sorry and but water is so sorry and it is taking only rho q g h amount at the last and because of this here we have got some loss and this is we call as here the losses has taking place some losses what kind of loss loss in the pipe and all considering this these two values are never equal okay you have got to understand this okay now we will solve a small problem okay i have got one problem from you uh, for you for from the book of professor s k som okay so this is uh, problem number one that a centrifugal pump 1.3 meters in diameter delivers 3.5 meter cubes per minute of water at a tip speed of 10 meters per second and a flow velocity of 1.6 meters per second the outer blade angle is 30 degree to the tangent at the impeller periphery Calculate the torque developed by the impeller. You have to find the torque developed. 
so you need to find the torque that is developed by the impeller so how to proceed first understand the problem a centrifugal pump 1.3 meters in diameter whenever they tell you a centrifugal pump 1.3 meters in diameter consider that it is a they are take, talking about the peripheral diameter so d outer is 1.3 meters okay no problem understanding this and delivers 3.5 meter cube per minute so discharge q is 3.5 meter cube per minute let us take it to meter cube per second so 3.5 divided by 60 it will be meter cube per second now it is okay what more they have told is and a flow velocity of 1.6 meters per second and a flow velocity of 1.6 meters per second the outer blade angle is 30 degree to the tangent at the impeller periphery calculate the torque developed by the impeller so they have told you that impeller periphery so the flow velocity they are talking is is the outer flow velocity that is vf2 is 1.6 meters per second they have also told you that uh, that it delivers a water uh, at a tip speed of 10 meters per second at a tip speed of 10 meters per second that means suppose if i just draw the blade if i just draw the blade when water leaves um, what when water leaves from here it has got some v2 component and the tangential velocity of the blade is 10 meters per second that is u2 is 10 meters per second here you can see it u2 is 10 meters per second when they say that it is the tip speed tip speed of 10 meters per second tip speed means the uh, speed of the tangential speed of the runner uh, impeller blade okay now we will start it see you need to find the torque so torque is what it is power divided by omega because we know that power is nothing but torque into omega so this is the thing from where this formula came i, I can sh um, show you but i know that you all are quite familiar with this power by omega okay now see what is the formula for power supplied power supplied is nothing but power supplied by impeller is what power supplied by impeller it was rho q v w2 into u2 it was rho q v w2 into u2 isn't it and my omega omega is nothing but omega in this case is nothing but u2 into r2 u2 into r2 u2 is 10 into r2 is 1.3 by 2 because r2 is d0 or d2 whatever you consider i have written d0 so i am writing this it is d0 by 2 r2 r2 so it is like this so you will get 5 into 1.3 it is 6.5 6.5 rad per second this is the value of omega you have got now just put it in the formula if you put it in formula what you will get is that power uh, torque is equals to power that is rho q v w2 u2 by omega this is the thing the value of rho you know it is 1000 into q the q you know it is 3.5 divided by 60 
it is 3.5 divided by 60 into VW2 into U2 U2 I know U2 is nothing but 10 so it is 10 divided by Omega I have just found the value of Omega it is 6.5 so it is 6.5 but I need to find the value of VW2 isn't it I need to find the value of VW2 see how we will find the value of VW2 it is very simple from the velocity triangle we have already understood the velocity triangle mm, Omega will be in this direction so this is V1 which is equals to Vf1 can you see it yes this is my U1 this is my VR1 this will be VR2 this is V2 this is VF2 this is VW2 and this total thing is U2 VW2 was this much and U2 is the total okay now try to understand first go back to the question it is given that the outer blade angle is 30 degree to the tangent at the impeller periphery outer blade angle is 30 degree to the tangent at impeller periphery if this is my impeller if this is my impeller periphery that means end point of the impeller it was something like this and its tangent is something like this then this is 30 degree according to the question if this is 30 degree then this angle will be 30 degree then this angle will be 30 degree you need to find out the value of VW2 isn't it so if I look in this smaller triangle it is very simple I know that you will be able to understand tan 30 degree is what it is VF2 divided by only this much this much is what U2 minus of VW2 so value of VF2 we know tan 30 degree is equal to VF2 is 1.6 divided by U2 is 10 minus VW2 from this you will find the value of VW2 VW2 will come something about 7.23 meters okay it will come something uh, it is meters per second yes 7.23 meters per second you just put this value of VW2 over here you will be able to find the torque okay so this was all about today's lecture solve some try to solve some more problems uh, first make your concepts clear regarding all the efficiency terms I hope that if you see my video carefully you will be able to understand all the terms uh, there are some more concepts which you need to learn is priming of the pump and cavitation of the pump uh, in this video um, oh, I will only tell you something about the priming of the pump cavitation of the pump and all I will tell you in the next video priming of the pump is very important and even in our household pumps we face this problem sometimes that suppose just uh, uh, let me take this example suppose this initially there is no water over here there is no water in this zone water is over here if you just start to rotate the uh, to rotate the blade what will happen this blade will cut the air present in it it will cut the air present in it if it cuts the air it won't be able to produce a lower pressure it won't be able to produce a much lower pressure so it won't be able to suck pipe uh, suck water from this pipe through this pipe so what you need to do you need to do is that you want to 
you need to put some and uh, water initially before starting the pump in uh, before starting the pump so that when this you start the impeller the impellers will start rotating and it will cut that water present in it so when it will cut water it will produce a considerable amount of low pressure so then it will start to suck water um, when i just uh, uh, made one uh, uh, pump it basically works on the centrifuge principle of centrifugal pump toy pump just with some bottle caps and all i was um, very curious to know that why it was not sucking power water i've just i maybe made one suction pipe and one delivery pump pipe i was seeing that it was not sucking water from the reserve lower reservoir then i and when i read this then i understood that what was the problem at that time that problem was because the um, uh, blades are rotating but it is not able to create a low pressure zone over here because uh, i was not adding some water initially if you what start what and if you add some water initially the blades will cut that water present in it and it will produce a considerable amount of low pressure then it will start to suck and this process of initially feeding some water to the pump is known as priming of the pump okay cavitation i can explain you um, in very simple way but you need to understand from your books much uh, much vastly see cavitation is very simple concept and it is very interesting and vast thing which is a, a very important thing in submarines and all shapes submarines it is very important cavitation principle what is cavitation see when the pressure in this zone drops pressure is very low and we know that water will boil at a much lower temperature if the pressure is low so when the pressure is low the uh, water present around it may start boiling at that temperature because when pressure becomes very low water will start boiling at that temperature only because the boiling point of water reduces in lower pressure isn't it so what will happen is that they will uh, those water water bubbles or steam will deposit on the blades of the impeller and this will erode the blades this is known as cavitation okay thank you very much